We're going to prepare a sky first of all and come down almost to horizon line. Although there quite a lot of that will be covered up, it's good because if you do have any gaps, you don't want to come back to white. You want to come back to the color of the sky. I tend to find acrylics dry darker. And so I have to try and keep it as light as I can. That's why I suggest using at least a couple of different whites. And I tend to always end up with a much brighter sky than it is. Although today, 24 degrees, it's pretty lovely. And a little bit of blue, cerulean blue, quite a lot of white. And then this slow cross hatching. The white really blends the paint beautifully. And it's really quite a white sky. So you can actually introduce a bit of gray in, but I think I'll keep it white and blue as much as possible. And because it was a tiny bit of gray there, we can add a bit of cloud just for a bit of variation. And you tend to need to get light up as you go towards the horizon line. And you don't want just to go backwards and forwards with, with um, straight lines of brush strokes. I tend to find it gives a lot more interest if you can keep this little cross-hatching effect and maybe even consider putting a tiny little bit of, of um, Payne's yellow towards the horizon where it's starting to, to lighten off because there's a lot more um, atmosphere between you and the distance. Now, because we're going to have a green um, and brown base, it's not a bad idea to just cover our entire canvas so that we don't have a, a straight white canvas to work with. And we'll come back over this often, so it's not like that's what's going to stay, but at least we're just covering the canvas and introduce a tiny little bit of, of colour. Now, because we're thinking about trees way off in the distance, we can introduce a tiny bit of green and blue and maybe even a tiny bit of, of um, Payne's Grey. And we're just going to give the effect of trees. See how we're not really, we're not really defining anything in great detail, but we're just giving the effect of, of foliage in the distance. Mm -hmm. So no great detail. Okay. And a tiny little bit of the blue-green just gives the effect of eucalypts. Now we might um, think about um, a path that's meandering its way through there so we can come in with, with um, the sort of effect of a path working its way And you tend to get paint thicker as you get closer to the front or, or to the um, foreground. I think my big old brush had a few brush um, threads in there, but that's okay. It gives a bit more te texture to it as well. I'm going to paint the edges of my painting as I'm going along with the colours that I've been using. So it's just a matter of brushing, I probably would have done the blue there, but brushing the edges, sometimes with just the leftover paint, and you can always add and change that later, but it connects it with the rest of the painting if you've used the same colours. So that's coming up to the sky again at the top, so a little bit of blue in there. And across the top.
So if you're looking at your painting and you see it a little bit slow, it, it blends with all the right colours. It's not sort of alien to the rest of the painting. And acrylic dries very quickly. So you can even put it down like that or you can fix it up again later. Now we'll consider what trees we're going to do. Yeah, let's look at the view. Now there are so many trees you couldn't possibly put the whole lot in. You have to be selective. So the ones that take your fancy, that stand out. So the gum with the dark brown base and a very beautiful angled branch is something I'd like to collect. The long grey white uh, canvases here and again. There are three to the right and that might be too many and that green bush right in front you might want to avoid altogether with the bin. You can you can leave things out. But we'd like to get the sort of the the path going down behind and then at a long distance away are some again pale grey branches and I'll probably begin with those and then come forward and move forward into the painting. I graduated to a slightly smaller brush, still fairly big, and I'm going to just choose a little bit of grey and the pan's um, yellow and pick out some tree shapes at a distance. So by choosing a couple of colours, I'm not I'm not ending up with all the same, the trees looking all exactly the same. And then I'll, this is where this very rough brush can be quite fun to use for foliage. Tiny, tiny little bit of green, little bit of light here. And I'm just going to speckle. That's probably a little bit too um, dark in colour. But I'm just going to speckle some coloured um, leaves a bit more blue actually in brown. Nothing really to define, just to give the effect of, of trees in the distance. And it's just fun really, you don't have to look very, very carefully at what's there, you can just have a bit of fun. I just tend to just mix on the palette like this, so I'm getting a lighter tree because our um, Eucalypts are very, very much white, grey and a tiny little bit of blue. They're not a lot of green. That's probably a bit too green there. Mm. And there's quite a bit of greenery where people are walking from, so I might put a little bit darker in there so where people have come through. Okay, now we're going to start picking out some trees that are much closer to us and I think I would like one significant, one significant tree up through here. Be quite confident with your strokes because it a little bit of a few little strokes that don't look quite as as arresting as a good sweep of colour. And there's quite um, a lot of brown at the base of that tree. And I'd still like to do that tree with the with the branch. Now I might have actually left not quite enough space for it, but I'll give it a go. So a much stronger brown tree here. And it's cutting out the other tree behind but that's fine. And the branch that I really want to catch up is that lovely angled branch that comes in and around so I'm going to just try to capture that little branch that goes across like that. Sort of like that and I've actually just taken a decision to add the two trees and maybe not a third and then 
much darker leaves. And we can bring in again with that much darker brush to get smaller effects of, of leaves. And then the fine rigger brush is the one that you can use for finer branches. But you need to load, load it with quite a bit of um, paint. You sometimes turn the rigger brush as you're painting so that you're keeping the paint um, running as you're, as you're brushing. Now there's quite a lot of bark at the foot of that tree so you can and, and leaf litter might be a thing to add to so that you've got um, things happening here in the foreground. And maybe some bushes here in the centre where we've um, where people have walked along. You continue like this and the more you observe the more you see the longer you can add but really the basics are just a bit of fun and give it a try it's great fun painting lovely to be out in the um, in the outdoors So although I could go on adding more detail, more branches, and the longer you look, the more you see, towards the end, it's a good idea, if you sort of feel happy with it, to put your signature. I like to have developed one that I can do in a fairly free-flowing signature, so... not to play with it too much but I have already. <laughs> Today's an introduction on how to have fun with acrylics. You can experiment, there aren't a lot of rules and the more often you do it the better you'll become. Next time we hope to show you, Brenda Smith will show a demonstration on watercolour and we may have some uh, more experiments with gouache and even oil painting in the future. So look online with U3A art, drawing and art and maybe join the group when we get together again. Bye for now.